So I've got some good news guys, as you can see I've got the keys as well as the owner's manual as well. So you're probably wondering how I got my hands on these. Inside the car was an invoice with the previous owner's uh, details. So what we did is got onto the phone with the previous owner, we explained the situation, how we purchased the car from the salvage auction. He turns out to be a really nice guy. He basically told us how he crashed the car. He's on the motorway doing 70 miles an hour in really bad weather. He must have aquaplaned and he was telling us how he basically lost control of the car and hit into the centre reservation which caused obviously the heavy damage to the quarter panel. So yeah, that's the uh, update on how the car was hit. And now that we've got the keys, guys just to let you know, these, car, these keys are very expensive and they're unique as well. So if I open the pod for you, I'll show you. The master key just here, it has these very unique holes on all four sides. It looks like someone's drilled them in. Yeah, so these unique holes are different on every GTR model, as you can imagine. And this key comes straight from Japan as well. And uh, we have been quoted uh, 600 pounds just for the master key. And that, so that's coming from straight from Japan as well. The fob itself, that's about 300 pounds. It comes from Japan and they program it here, but the master key has to be made in Japan. And uh, yeah, so that's the uh, quote from the dealership that, uh, that we got. But lucky for us, we found the uh, invoice and we got the uh, car from the uh, previous owner. So we saved ourselves a lot of money because if you had to take it to the dealership, Literally, it takes up to six weeks for the keys to get here, and you have to take the car down to the dealership as well. And as you can imagine, the car's in skates. We just about got the car into the workshop, so getting the car back out would have been a, you know, a lot of hard work and a lot of effort as well. So yeah, so what we're gonna do is, now that we've got the keys, we're gonna see if the car starts. So I've got Zij at the front of the car right now, and he's basically working on the oil cooler right now. So the car is spitting out a lot of oil, uh, so there is a small chance the engine could be seized. Uh, so Zij's just here trying to bypass the oil cooler by connecting two pipes. So if you just come around this way, if you guys remember, there was a severe leak. We've got pretty much a, a full bucket of oil right there. So Z is going to basically uh, bypass the oil cooler. I'm not sure if you do it, but he's going to explain to you now. So what I'm doing now is obviously the oil cooler is damaged. Uh, so both pipes are off. So what I've done is I've got a pipe here. So what we're going to do, we're going to bridge it. So this is going to bypass obviously having an oil cooler just for a temporary fix to get it started. So we know the engine runs. So I'm going to quickly put the tie clips, uh, sorry, the jubilee clips on. Then we can take it from there. I'm just hoping that the engine's not seized because the engine, the cheapest engine that I've seen on eBay is about £10,000. I mean, if we were to actually buy a new engine, it wouldn't really be worth fixing the car, to be honest. That would literally blow the whole budget for this uh, build. I'm just going through this paperwork and I just realised it cost £555 a year for tax. So it's pretty much the same amount as uh, the RS6, what we're paying right now. And MOT as well. It expires, well, it expired uh, last year, December. There's various invoices tires, tracking, all sorts. So yeah, I don't want to show you guys the information though. It's got the previous owner's uh, address in there as well. So yeah, don't want to give that information away. Anyways, if the previous owner is watching, I just want to say a huge thank you for helping us out. Hopefully the keys work, fingers crossed. Shouldn't be too long now, guys. I just want to get these pipes, uh, these Jubilee clips on really tight because they will fly off because uh, the oil cooler, the uh, oil pressure coming from the engine is there's quite a lot of pressure coming from it, so I'm going to put two clips on each side. Just finish off putting the um, bridge on the oil cooler. So we check the oil now, I did put some oil in it, so we'll just double check it. The, the engine did have like a touch of oil on it, it's just literally touching dipstick, now you can see it's near enough uh, on the max, so that should do it for now. So we got a new uh, tool in the workshop, it's a snap-on battery charger and a stabiliser. And it also charges AGM batteries, which is a good thing, because a lot of the cars that we uh, get in here, uh, have AGM batteries. So anyway, we've got the battery cables uh, connected. So we'll set the charger up now. We'll set it to volt, 12 volt, uh, standard battery, it's not an uh, AGM. Trickle charge, fast charge. We give it a fast charge. I'm gonna let that charge for a bit now. So it's on 12 volts at the moment. So we need to get it to about 13 before we can try cranking it. Right, so while the battery is charging, what I'm gonna do is uh, open the tailgate. We have got enough power for that. So yeah, I'm going to show you guys a little hack. If you do own a GTR, you probably know this already, but for those of you that don't know, if you remove the uh, carpet from the uh, passenger side footwell, 
So if you remove this bit here, well, you got your lock bit just there. You are missing the axle stand. Uh, but just here, you got a keyhole. If you do lose all power to your car and your fob doesn't work for whatever reason, all you got to do is get your uh, master key out, get it in there, and give it a twist clockwise, and the boot should open. Uh, Z, just try to open the boot on it. Yeah, it's open there. You won't believe what's in the back. What you got in there? You got a lot in the back. Is it? Is this hope is in one piece. I think one of the lugs are broken right here, but it's attached. Is there any cracks in the frame? No. That's actually in good condition. It is, it's just one of the lugs. Do you know, I don't think this is the actual light from the accident. Because if you look on the uh, bracket itself, yeah, there's two lugs, on, the lugs there. on there. So this must have been purchased after the accident. I think which the, is quite odd. Yeah, I think the guy who's had the car, he must have purchased it. I probably just left it in there, he probably wanted to repair it. That is quite odd, but that's going to basically save us a thousand pounds because I was researching the uh, lights on the uh, on eBay. The cheapest one that I found was actually a thousand pounds. Yeah, so if you see here, you've got a thousand pounds, well, 1,200, 1,250 old lights. Right, so that's going to obviously save us a lot of money. It's going to knock off a thousand pounds off the overall budget. So hopefully we can put that money towards actually modifying the car. So yeah, that's a big saving there. Let's just see what's inside the, the rest of the boot. I have no idea what that is. Yeah, it's got like a little uh, design, yeah. Look at the seat cover. That's what it looks like. So you've got one of the scuttle panels. Engine bay. So you see these are the broken panels. This is basically for the pop-ups, you know, on the front, that the, uh, oh, the yeah. bonnet pop-ups. See, I, I didn't know they had covers. Yeah. But I'm glad they got the... Uh, both colors for that. Well, we got one, we need to find the other one. Hopefully it's in it somewhere. For some of you guys who are thinking why the uh, all the carpets and the plastics are all open, it's because the insurance company, what they do is, they take all that apart to uh, assess the damage, and that's how they categorize the cars. It's cracked in there as well. That's the beam for the light. Everything's all been stripped out now so we could uh, inspect the damage. You can see right here, the wheel arch is caved in really badly. If you look on the other side, that's how it should be. The boot floor is actually all right. To be honest with you, it's got a little crease around here where it's been pushed in. But when we start pulling it, we can get that back to normal. And you can see right here, it's basically got welds and spot welds for different sections. So you got a section right here, section here, this long section. Little box sections, so they're all uh, spot welded and welded together. So we'll have to drill them all out and put new ones in. I think the tailgate's all right as well. Car should have enough power to actually start, so should we give it a go? Yeah, we'll have a look how much uh, volts it's actually on now. So we're on 15 volts, now that's more than enough power to get it to crank. So the lock and unlock's not working for some strange reason. Can't lock it so. No. So the key is slotted in now and it's it's not doing anything. It's stuck in lock mode. And if you see right there it's it's got a key light on. And the immobilizer's flashing. I think we'll have to check the fuses now. So you see right here, we've got a fuel pump, starter ignition, and all the fuses are right here, and it shows you exactly what fuse does what, and what location it's in. So we'll get a multimeter and start checking all the fuses. See, no pressure, but the engine of this car, the cheapest one that I found is 10 grand, so I'm Whoa. hoping you get this sort out, mate, because that would blow the budget. Bloody hell. If not, we'll have an engine rebuild on the channel, but hopefully, we'll actually get it started. Guys, sorry about the focus, this camera's actually quite slow. But so anyway, Z, you, how far have you got then? I've, uh, I've checked all the fuses. Uh, there's one inside the car, which is on the footwell of the drive side right here. Yeah. So, uh, we'll slot a key right in and see what it does. Still doing the same thing. I've read actually uh, up about these uh, GTRs and Nissans, they have a common fault with the uh, strain locks on them. 
So I think the steering lock is right here. They say if you tap it, you might get it out of lock mode. So give that a try. No, no luck no with luck. that. I tell you what we'll do is we'll take it apart. Uh, there's three buttons in it, and you have to actually get them in a the sequence. Then that should actually let us get it out of lock mode. So we'll give that a try now. So you're taking the ignition lock out now, and there we have it. This is the button I was actually on about. That needs to get pressed. Uh, so we couldn't hear the motor, so hopefully now you should activate it out of uh, lock mode. So you see right here, the motor turns, and this press, uh, this uh, sorry button gets pressed. You know, I try to zoom into it, but the camera's out of focus. Uh, you know, I think I can see it. Yeah. I'll so see we'll, right there, we'll yeah. give that a try, guys. So if you look down there, that's the button that he's talking about. You, you see that right up? there? That button right there. Yeah, you could just about see it. So we'll, uh, I'll have to hold it actually, because that's just gonna fall out. And this is our lock right here, which locks the steering. So what are you saying? This is a common problem. It's a common problem on the Nissans uh, with the electric locks on them. So yeah, we'll give that a try now. So we'll get a key, back in the key slot. It's saying no key detected, and we're getting no movement. So let's press that button right now. So we got a button pressed. If I press the button, that should get us out of lock mode. Yep. So we're in access mode. Button's pressed. It says foot on the brake. So we get it to on now. I'll see if it cranks. Let's see if we could actually get it into gear. There we have it. Reverse camera. We got all our modes here. Yeah, these are all the dials you get, guys. So you got your oil temperature, coolant, uh, boost, all sorts of different gauges there. Does go into a lot of detail. So the only uh, lights we got on is uh, low tire pressure. We got airbag light on tailgate open and the key light I don't know why the key lights on this part because of the ignition barrel the uh, lock it's gone off if I press that button it actually goes off oh yeah it does it's a light at the very bottom let go of the button it should come back on yeah there it is yeah the so one. so that was the, the actual issue with it it's a common problem uh, com uh, common problem on the Nissan we'll have to actually get that sorted Guys, so as you just heard, the engine does start. It seems to be sounding all right. There's no mechanical issues with the engine right now. So yeah, that's uh, one big hurdle out of the way because if the engine was uh, faulty or if it wasn't running at all, there's a good chance this project would have come to a dead end. So I'm glad that's done and out of the way. We can now move on to the next biggest hurdle, which is the quarter panel right here. So what we're gonna start doing is uh, start ordering parts like the quarter panel, the donor quarter panel. So just here, I've got the list of parts that we need. It is a massive list. Uh, full of just a bunch of expensive parts looking at between seven to eight grand just in parts one thing that I'm going to mark off is the uh, headlight so that's going to be one thousand pounds saving off that list so uh, yeah I need to get on, on that tonight hopefully start ordering parts so on the next video we're going to be basically uh, stripping this quarter panel area and uh, hopefully uh, pulling it and getting it ready for the new quarter panel once you've ordered it so yeah uh, we're going to end the video there thanks a lot for watching guys don't forget to comment, like, share and subscribe. And if you haven't already, join us on Instagram at Performance Rebuilds to keep up to date with what we're doing. So yeah, we'll see you guys on the next GTR video.